Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Welcome back to Force Strategy Gaming. Going to be casting a game for you today between Cheetah Prime and FXO T Gun. So right over here at the bottom position, our red Protoss is Cheetah, and in the top position we have X FXO T Gun as the blue Zerg. So Taren, no, not Taren. Protoss versus Zerg here on Metalopolis, and uh, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff been going on lately. I just introduced a brand new series uh, from us here, Force Strategy Gaming's Like a Boss, and I actually think it's quite phenomenal I'm looking forward to continue the continuation of that series uh, basically just trying to show you guys tips and tricks that the professional level players do uh, the first episode in the series was teaching you marine splitting against banelings um, using the patrol move pretty effective technique uh, cut back drastically when zerglings are thrown into the mix but at the same time realize that having siege tanks and stuff is gonna help a bit with that but anyways that's enough chatter about that if you haven't checked out the Like a Boss series, I suggest go ahead and doing so. It's going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to be trying to do a couple of those a week. And yeah, just going until there's no more stuff to talk about. But I don't know if that's ever going to be the case because there is always pretty neat tactics involved in StarCraft. And there's always going to be something for me to show you guys and uh, teach you to incorporate into your own gameplay. But anyways, let's get right into the game here again. We have T-Gun right up in the north position. And it looks like Cheetah is going to be moving up to scout him right now. Uh, should be checking his base. And obviously here we can see T-Gun. Again, starting out with that one base play, uh, opening up with that gas, and going to be getting that pool in just one moment, actually. Should just about hit 200, and there we go, trying to drop down that pool. And for a moment, Cheeto was attempting to uh, stop that by passing right by it, obviously de denying the placement there. And that actually made the uh, the drop of that spawning pool a little bit later than it typically would be. We can see inside of Cheetah's base, starting off with a forge. So going to be going for a cannon rush right now. Uh, you know, Cheetah, wow, that's pretty intense right now. We got two pylons placed right here at the bottom on and then walling himself in so I'm really interested to see what he's gonna be trying to do right now okay he's protecting his cannon I think he's probably gonna protect it kill off one cannon and drop down there we go so he's gonna drop it down he should be killing off the pylon there we go killing off the pylon and moving on up and is he gonna finish that no he's not now at this moment obviously uh, T-Gun is fully aware he needs to try to kill that probe that is his primary importance if he can just deny vision of the high ground then there's nothing Cheetah's gonna be able to do Cheetah trying to force his way through and yes he does by clicking the mineral patch getting a pylon up top and if this goes through he's in a really good spot second probe making its way on up right now this is already quite an intense game dropping down another pylon right there and he does just have these two cannons down and that is gonna kill off the spawning pool this spawning pool is dead and there's absolutely nothing right now that T-Gun can do about it so already an intense start we've got another cannon coming in we do have this one spine crawler that's going to stop any more cannons from encroaching but the fact that he's managed to drop this is absolutely huge and the other thing too is that this is within range of that mineral line so really uh t-gun is in a really tough spot right now taking a look over here a uh, cheetah hasn't made any transition still working on that probe count though is going to still be working on that economy zerglin's making their way out but this is going to be very tough for him to deal with we have two more cannons coming in. Spawning pool is dropped. Going to be trying to take advantage of that brewing damage to try to knock down as many of these as possible. He's probably going to get down. Yes, this photon cannon is going to drop. And then shortly thereafter, going to be trying to go for this pylon. And yes, not looking good at all. Uh, Cheetah is going to be losing this pylon. He needs, again, he really needs to maintain vision of the high ground. I think he's going to be trying to continuously distract fire from that spine crawler by dropping down additional buildings and then killing them. Uh, but these two are going to be warping in as well. So he should actually be okay. The problem is, though, he's not going to be able to encroach any further. But right now, uh, T-Gun is in a very, very unfortunate situation. He cannot mine from this half of the map. That is not, this is not happening. He has no chance of mining from here. And the spine crawler is going to be making work now. And obviously now for, for the cannon, unfortunately, the spine crawler is going to win because of that transfuse. We do have this one spawning pool being dropped right now. And I think as of this point, uh, this attack has been thwarted here from Cheetah. But you know what? The damage is done. He severely delayed that spawning pool. On top of that, there's still no mining going on over here. And as long as he can maintain high ground vision. And oh no, I think with the dropping of that, it looks like T-Gun is going to be able to finally start uh, gathering from over here because with this vision he cannot see that mineral patch at all um, with the cannon so unfortunately for him that is no longer going to be an effective tactic and going to be forced to push back from this point forward uh, nothing else he's going to be able to do still continuing up this cannon production taking a look back home though is preparing for that transition um, sit, starting to sit on a little bit of gas he did just get out that gateway should be dropping that cyber core in just one moment as well 
But I have to say, very, very effective use of a cannon rush from Cheetah. That was pretty inf impressive. But at the same time, a great job by Tegan. I mean, that was pretty intense. Going for that wall off, making him his probe nice and safe, and then dropping off that cannon, canceling it, bringing it on in, and then you saw how effectively he was able to uh, rush at the top too. And, and again, this is against a Zerg player where he can't even build on the creep. So great, 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 great tactics there from Cheetah. Pr pretty interesting play, if nothing else. And uh, we're starting to see a Zealot rush now. He's going to be chrono boosting out some Zealots. He does have this Cyber Core making its way on in. You can see, obviously, his resource is very, very low. Starting to pull quite a bit of SP, and he's getting ready for some sort of heavy transition, I know. Uh, we can see right now Warp Gate Research going to start to be chrono boosted in. Taking a look back over here, uh, FXO did get another uh, spine crawler down and going to be making its way forward, but it needs to be careful getting a few shots from there. Uh, the Queen obviously is going to be able to transfuse, and here we go. These pylons are going to drop, so again, this uh, cannon rush is no longer going to be effective, but again, the damage has been done. He stopped mining for so long, just so effective, and let's see what his transition is going to be. We've got a Twilight Council making its way on up, so maybe seeing DT. We may be seeing Blink Stalker. Those are probably the two likely things that we're going to be looking at. I actually would not be at all surprised if he went straight for DT. Uh, given the nature of the rush and the fact that it set a uh, T-Gun back so far behind um, as far as tech is concerned, you can see he's nowhere near a layer right now. He could technically go for the layer. We can see he's coming out with that Bailing list right now. Uh, we do have a few Zealots making their way on up here as well and just continuing up this harassment, dropping down these two pylons right now um, just to make sure that he does keep this Photon Cannon powered even after the drop of this pylon, which it did just go down. And two Spine Crawlers making their way on up. But look at that vision of those Spine Crawlers from this Photon Cannon, giving the bottom Photon Cannon vision against start making its way in. Zealots moving forward as well, starting to do some damage. Big Transfuse going down though on that spine crawler and here comes the dark shrine so we are going to see a transition right now into some dark templar from t-gun t-gun just being absolutely relentless with this harassment zerglin's going to be moving forward and i think he's got enough zerglins right now to overwhelm this it looks like he does Zerglin's wrapping forward, moving around that Stalker, getting a full surround, and that's going to take that out. Queen's moving forward and trying to take down this Photon Cannon. They're actually going to be successful, and here we go. This push has finally been stopped here by T-Gun, and T-Gun can finally look to start to make that transition. Uh, would like to see him go for an expansion. would also like to see him to try to get that layer because look at that. Dark Shrine still making its way on through, and as soon as that finishes, uh, he's going to be starting to get some DT on the board, and that's going to be very devastating, especially since T-Gun still doesn't have that layer up, although I think that Player is likely to finish the build time on the dark shrine is absolutely tremendous uh, takes so long for that to actually come through um, we can see right now trying to mount a counter attack and banelings we're gonna be seeing a baneling bus right now and i knew the banelings were on the board but i did not expect a full-on bus from them but it looks like that is going to be happening a little bit late there unfortunately on that force field gonna be dropping that century we've got a zealot making its way on in do we have any more centuries i would like to see some more centuries because here come the banelings right now getting ready to roll forward we do have the zealots in the front but those are gonna get mopped up very quickly banelings rolling forward and trying to target through the zealot unfortunately finally getting the zealot down zerglings trying to make their way on in and they do if only just a few a uh, baneling got very close there did manage to bust on a couple of guys now the big big problem right now for uh cheetah is the fact that his dark shrine was spotted so at this point in the game T-Gun is aware that that Dark Shrine is making its way on out, so we should be seeing an Overseer at some point in the near future, as soon as that layer pops up, and here's the Dark Shrine, so pivotal moment right now, is he going to try to get some DT in? I did just see one warping in, there it is, um, so he's going to get a few and try to make and mount a counterattack right now, and how about this for an intense game, <laughs> opening up with a cannon rush with Zella Pressure, transitioning into DT, a counterattack with a bailing bust, and it is only the beginning, guys, this is actually quite a long game, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I have a feeling that it's going to continue up in intensity, so there's two DT making their way straight across the board and not looking good right now. We do have that one sport crawler coming up and a second one's moving its way on up here at the expansion as well. He is aware. Again, he saw that Dark Shrine, so he's aware that this is coming. And here we go. DT moving into both areas. Going to be trying to snipe down that queen. Again, we do have the spine crawler as well as that sport crawler. As soon as that's up, he's going to be able to get vision of that That one sport crawler spotting this DT. DT, not too scared though, is able to chop down those guys very, very quickly and does manage to drop that queen. We have another DT moving on its way on in and they're actually both going to be making it up to the uh, top here and I would like to see him try to go straight for that yes he is he's gonna go straight for the sport caller unfortunately though again seeing that overseer is gonna force him to pull back he just wants to maybe take out some of the tech right now going for the Queens is obviously a really great idea as well because that drastically cuts back um, on his ability to produce units uh, T gun not gonna be able to do very much production spine crawler poking its way at those DT but not before those DT push their way forward and they're gonna be trying to drop that last Queen is he gonna be able to get it and no unfortunately he was just one shot away but the Queen did manage to make it away unscathed taking a look over here we do have Cheetah getting ready for an expansion himself. 
We can see for Tiga, and Tiga does have that extra ball up already, starting to get it fairly well saturated. I would like to see him actually push these back just a little bit right now, just so he doesn't inhibit the mining at all. We'll just lift it up and pull it back to the back. Uh, that way he doesn't have to worry about his guys trying to circumvent that spore crawler. And it looks like we're mounting a few roaches right now over here for Tiga, and that's of course going to help him quite a bit. And we're seeing another transition. Look at this building clump here. This is quite some SimCity, I must have to say. Uh, robotics facility making its way on through. Looks like he is all done with the DT. Also going to be moving up to that blink resource. Uh, that expo is about 50% of the way down, so should be getting that in sometime soon. We do have a changeling making its way on through right now for T-Gun. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Blink Stalkers, again, they're coming on in. We do have the level 1 upgrade. Just sticking with ro roaches right now. Now, unfortunately for T-Gun, I mean, he's dealt with so much harassment, he's been forced to respond pretty much this entire game. Forced to respond to the cannon rush. He was forced to respond by that attempted wall and by getting those banelings. Um, he was also forced to respond to those DT by getting those spore crawlers and that overseer. So hopefully we can see him uh, mount some counter aggression at some point. If he can manage to get the advantage, get some sort of a tech advantage. We, I know that, honestly, if he can pump out some heavy roaches and push out, he could actually do quite a bit of damage as long as he keeps that overseer with him for fear of that dark shrine because we don't have any immortals out right now we don't have anything very good from cheetah to deal with a heavy roach push but he also of course is looking to work on his econ um, i think that's his primary focus right now and here we go robotics bay making its way on out so we are seeing a transition for cheetah right now into those colossus we've <laughs> we've seen pretty much everything so far this game from cheetah cheetah making full use of the entire protoss arsenal um, observer making its way on over here as well and i don't know why it's going in that direction it should be heading straight towards t-gun's base i don't think he's worried about you know borrowed roaches or anything at this point uh that would be quite a heavy transition for sea gun and i don't think he could have could have really afforded it by now given the nature of everything that he's had to do this game. So yeah, it looks like just sticking with Heavy Roach, we do have um, that Roach speed coming, to, making its way on in as well, that Galeo Reconstitution. So going to be getting that nice little upgrade for them. Would like to see a range level 1 upgrade. He does have the Evo Chamber up, so would like to see him go for that as well. If not, go for an expansion sometime soon. We can see right now Cheetah getting ready for a third expo, and this is actually a very bad situation now. The Observer going to be moving on over, checking the tech, checking the unit composition here of T-Gun. But back to what I was saying over here, here is that Cheetah getting on this third uh, <laughs> T-Gun needs to definitely capitalize. He cannot be that far behind his opponent just now getting that third base as well. Now, I know this has been said many, many times, but it is very important to realize that as a Zerg player, you do pretty much have to be one base above your uh, Protoss and or Terran opponent. If you are not, then you are kind of technically behind due to the Larva situation, uh, due to the fact that you kind of really need that extra gas as well to be able to keep up um, tech-wise and for unit production. And yeah, it's just, it's really, it's really important to try to maintain that uh, one up above your Protoss or Terran opponent. So hopefully at some point in their future we do see T-Gun spot this expansion that way he will be able to realize he needs another expo himself. Uh, another observer making its way on through. We do have that Thermal Lance coming through right now as well as that second Colossus. Not a lot of really heavy ground forces right now although he is vesting a lot into those Colossus so that definitely has part to part and part of the reason why that is the case right now uh, we do have a Spire making its way on in right now as well for T-Gun. So T-Gun getting ready to get those Colossus for the getting ready to get those Corruptors to counter the likely Colossus losses and we can see right now cheetah spotting the third base and realizing that it's not even not even in right now uh, cheetah knows he's definitely in a strong position at this point Roach is moving forward. I don't know what they plan on doing against that uh, observer right there. <laughs> we do have this overseer, though. That's going to allow that queen to spot it and hopefully be able to snipe it down. I uh, need to do a little bit of micro so it doesn't get away. There we go. And it's going to be able to snipe that down pretty much no problem. So great job there by T-Gun. And yeah, right now, both players just macroing up, getting ready for that next big engagement. We do finally have the range as well as the Carpus upgrades coming right now for T-Gun's Roaches. Um, again, it looks like he's just going to be going for Roach Corruptor, not not mixing in Hydralis. He's going to be happy with just the Roach Heavy Ground Army, um, and that's actually can be quite effective. And look at this, Cheetah going for another Expo as well. So man, this game is just killing me, man. I tell you, <laughs> starting off with such early aggression, such early, early, um, you know, just such early action in the game, and then moving into a straight-up heavy match macro game just mass expanding here by cheetah very interesting play style i haven't seen a lot of games from him but man i'm telling you i'm gonna start looking for him now because this has been quite intense i would have to say we do have a couple of changelings moving their way on through actually three changelings making their way across the board uh, gonna be spotting those expos should be moving up into that high yield i think in fact um, let's see what he's doing
doing up here. Oh, look at that. Spotted over there. Did drop that one. A change in making its way on through over here, but that does get dropped as well. Now, he did see fire from that high ground, so he should be fully aware uh, of the fact that there was a expo up there. There's no other reason for him to have mounted his forces up there. Uh, let's take a look at his vision and see if he actually spotted. I don't think he did, but no, he did catch fire from that, uh, so that should give him some indication of what's going on over there. We can see finally Corruptors making their way onto the board. A few more roaches as well. Uh, getting ready to defend that expo. We do have four cannons making their way on Anchita. Loving those cannons, the static defenses uh, for those expansions. Obviously helping quite a bit in order to help you defend and take care of those when your army's not next to them. Again, the static defenses over here are going to help him win his armies across the board. And we are seeing a push right now, it looks like, from Cheetah. Cheetah making his way through. Uh, knowing that there is no uh, fourth base right here, it looks like he may be pushing up against this third expo from T-Gun. But he gun lots of roaches as well as corruptors he has more than enough i honestly feel he's got more than enough to deal with that let's take a look at that army tab really quick and i think there we go that's what it is um, taking a look at the army tab we can see definitely in a stronger position in terms of army um, t guns having a really really solid army 98 supplies as opposed to those 65 of cheetah so dropping that right now let me see what the command that is there we go <laughs> dropping that and look at this another transition we're gonna be seeing a stargate coming out right now for cheetah cheetah probably gonna be getting some void rays trying to amass that Protoss death ball but I tell you right now Cheetah is in a tremendous position. He's got this high yield up and running. We really, really need to see T-Gun go for another expo. Look at all of the Vespian right now that Cheetah is sitting on. And what that means, although it's obviously, you know, we would prefer him not sitting on this, it means that once he does start to get those minerals, which should be very shortly considering he's sitting at a high yield, he's going to be able to pump out a lot of Colossus, just a lot of tech-heavy units, and that's going to put him at an absolutely tremendous advantage. Again, we do have, wait one second. Yes, we do. Okay, that Stargate did just finish, so we'd like to start seeing some void rays come out sometime in the near future again it's really minerals that he's hurting on a uh, part of that too is going to be the fact that he's invested in so many cannons i mean just look at that it's it's definitely part of the reason that he is set back so low on those actual minerals but high on the vespian count and uh corruptor sitting over here getting ready to try to possibly snipe any colossus that may try to sneak by absolutely excellent creep spread here from T-Gun. T-Gun doing a phenomenal job. Uh, we do have some proxy pylons over here. And this is actually, I wouldn't be surprised if this came into play. If there is any engagement on this side, this is actually really solid placement. Um, I think he has the same sort of setup over here. Yes, he does. So yeah, whatever the engagement is, either side, uh, he does have these pylons available to build a warp in a ton of units. And we are seeing a big push come out right now from T-Gun, making his way across the board with a lot of Roaches Corruptors coming in from the backside as well. And going to try to be sneaking through and try to pick them off at the side, basically. Seeing some more mass expos coming out from Cheetah, trying to take his entire half of the map. Roaches, he'd be very careful. Blink Stalkers moving down, sniping down those Corruptors. Very unfortunate position, but he's still chasing away those Colossus. Roaches trying to push forward. Unfortunately, all those force fields, not a good situation of uh, those Corruptors do manage to take down at least that one Colossus, trying to get another one, but unfortunately not going to happen. Roach is forced to push back right now, and unfortunately, I do not think that that was worth it for T-Gun. T-Gun lost a lot of Corruptors, and Corruptors cost well, a lot of a lot of resources, so I don't think that that was the best situation for him. We can see right now uh, T-Gun is still supply capped, though, fully um, resupplying right there. He's getting mass amounts of Roaches right now. In fact, he's almost entirely Roach in terms of armies. He's, yeah, he's, he's got 62 Roaches. That's that's what he's sitting on 62 roaches 70 workers right now and that is his army comp he's actually no corruptors at the moment so he needs to push out with this and do something and look at this mothership making its way on through where is it coming from i think it's coming from right here here we go mothership making its way on through at the high yield again look at these mass expos really in terms of economy right now uh not really looking good uh t-gun is very far behind but again he did he did have that army's cap and i would have liked to see him push out but now both players uh, are finally capped at 200 to 200 and i definitely think that cheetah is in a massively overpowering position right now he's got the high yield he's got all the bases up and basically uh, his opponent right now t-gun is, is vastly far behind he's got two less bases than he should not sitting on the high yield and that is just not good at all i'm really surprised that we haven't seen him expand he's and just the fact that he's just playing with roaches i think he killed a few things off because we do have some infestors making their way on through continuous upgrades let's actually take a look at that we are 2-2 making his way into 3-3 right now let's take a look over here for cheetah and cheetah actually not having any armor or shield upgrades and just at the weapons upgrade right now for his ground forces um air units have no upgrades right now as well he does have size storm making its way on in so just running the whole gambit in terms of the types of units um but <laughs> really really surprised he's so roach heavy this is just absolutely nuts man he's just got pretty much 
entirely roaches. Um, he doesn't have the neural parasite, but he does have a researching right now. I was wondering why he was getting those infestors. Obviously, the fungal growth can help against the blink stalkers. Um, that's definitely a case. And look at this right now. Cheat is killing off a bunch of his workers. He wants to free up some supply so that he can go ahead and get some more units. And yes, here we go. So again, both players fully capped. And here we go. Mothership hits the board. And it has just gotten real. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, shit's gotten, <laughs> shit's gotten real. And it's about to hit the fan. Mothership on the board, fully capped. Would like to see him to continue those upgrades. Look at the massive amounts of upgrades coming out right now for T-Gun. T-Gun just going absolutely house, getting upgrades for everything that's possible. Getting the adrenal glands, uh, actually. I mean, he doesn't even have any Zerglings on the board, but he's just getting it because he can. And finally getting up that expansion right over here. Still doesn't have that high yield, though, and that's definitely putting him at a disadvantage. Now, we can see right now, this is something really important to realize. Come this point in the game, you know, you start to look at games that, that push 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and a lot of times you're going to see players capped. Aside from any harassment or dropping that may be taking place, you're going to see both players typically capped in those situations. So then what it becomes about is not only your stockpooling uh, resources, but it also comes how many production buildings you have. Look at Cheetah coming down with massive amounts of gateways. That way, once a fight does happen and he loses his forces he's going to be able to reinforce very quickly that's the idea that's the mentality there and the same thing's happening over here for t-gun t-gun even though he's pretty much all roaches a couple hydras and only a few infestors once a fight does happen he's getting all these upgrades so that he can switch to whatever comp he wants whatever comp's going to work and here it comes right now big engagement's about to take place cheetah's pushing forward he's got this death ball he has his mothership and this is going to be a big problem because there is only a little bit of anti-air right now for t-gun so it's really going to come down to whether or not not he I don't know this cloak is gonna be the death of him I think I don't know if he's gonna be able to drop that and we do also have a fruit few brew lords making their way on in. So right now he has got no anti-air except for those few hydralis. This is not a good situation. Here comes the push right now and I am not sure he's prepared to deal with this mothership. Neural Parasite going down on the mothership. That is the most intense thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Look at that vortex putting all of his units into the vortex as well. Um, I'm not sure if he meant to do that or not but that Neural Parasite on that mothership is pretty intense. Is he going to be able to get it down again? The mothership is not his anymore. He needs to pick it back up. Uh, does he have? He does not have enough energy. Here we go. Everyone popping out right Right now colossus is going to be absolutely going to town he does manage to drop the mothership though with those hydralis and those roaches very quickly mopping up everything right now the cheetah has and cheetah dropping his units to the brew lords as well reinforcing with a ton of blank stalkers we have 30 zerglings as well as 15 roaches making their way on in those brew lords going to town on these units though and uh, this is unbelievable this is not looking good at all for cheetah cheetah is forced to push back we've got a ton of zerglings that just streamed in as well as a few roaches and here we go i think we're about ready to see a counterattack right now we just have four brew lords on the board a 199 as opposed to that 161 just look absolutely how intense it is zerg can so quickly reinforce their army it is absolutely unbelievable he's already sitting at 200 200 and get ready to mount another counterattack. and here it comes that massive amount of zerglings plus those brew lords is going to work very very well against those blink stalkers um it's going to be very hard but look at this a dt coming into the mix and going to start attacking these units he's got no cloak detection right now needs to pull down with his overseer if he still has one on the board i don't think he has it hotkeyed so hopefully he grabbed it and pulled it on over he needs to either push or do something and here we go the mass amount of blink stalkers pushing forward right now for cheetah trying to wrap around he just gets the zerglings around roaches moving to as forward as they can to try to get within range brew lords bringing down those brew lords gonna help quite a bit a uh, stalkers trying to blink back but i think there are just too many roaches and zerglings right now coupled with these brew lords even with that dt going to town these blink stalkers not looking good at all we are seeing that constant reinforcement and still even with losing a lot of his army t gun is is still continuing up that supply cap look at him he's constantly reinforcing that number dropping but picking back up dropping and picking back up and this is a real real advantage to zerg late game when you're sitting on so much larva you can absolutely reinforce so very quickly and just mop up everything we've got so many zerglings making their way on up and unfortunately for cheetah he does have to wait for that warp gate cooldown before he can get anything else in but the Blink Stalkers managing to mop up everything. Again, we have so many Zerglings. We also have a few Roaches and Hydras making their way out. Another Mothership about to come into play right now as well. The Mothership just barely survived, though. Almost dropped that Nexus, and that would have knocked that Mothership out. Uh, so it looks like it is going to hit the board. And here we go, though. I think he's pushing a little prematurely. Cheetah shouldn't be pushing out right now. He should wait for that Mothership and then make the move. And we have a ton of uh, Overlords making their way on in as well. Uh, don't. Uh, hopefully he doesn't sacrifice those. I would hate to see him get below Supply Cap. Look at all those 
Bailey's making that transition to Bailey's. This is a position that I mentioned earlier. Even though he's getting all these upgrades for things he wasn't even necessarily using, it could come into effect because on the drop of a hat, T-Gun is able to switch up his unit comp. He can go with whatever he wants. He's got upgrades for everything, so it doesn't really matter. And we have a few Infestors coming into play as well, and that may again come into play with this Mothership. This has been probably one of the most intense games I have ever casted. There's just been so much going on and such a variation of things uh, throughout the entirety of the game. We are seeing mass blink stalkers as well as a ton of high templar here as well this high templar of course could be very very effective especially against this very light army we have a lot of zerglings we have a lot of hydralis uh, both of those are light units and they can get dropped very very quickly it looks like we're going to be seeing some baneling drops here as well we do see those overlords now unfortunately here for cheetah those overlords are armored units and they actually don't they're not going to be um, quite as easy to drop for him so these guys are going to be able to just roll on in and drop these banelings pretty quickly as long as he can get them in a good spot if he can drop them right on this high templar Cheetah's going to be in a very tough spot, but here comes the push right now. A really big important thing is how effectively he can use that mothership. Trying to get up this expo. T-Gun is realizing he's starting to run low on resources. He does have this base up, but here we go. Big push. Going to be trying to push in from multiple angles. Overlords moving their way in, getting ready to drop those Banelings. Huge storms going down, catching them all in the choke point, but here we go. Baneling drop going on top. It's really going to come down to how effective this is. Great Neural Parasite. Unfortunately, that Infestor does drop right there. Banelings need to get dropped or do something. Please drop your Banelings. Please drop your Banelings. We do have this Overseer over here. You can see everything. Banelings getting dropped in there. There we go. So much damage going down. I don't think we've got a lot of High Templar anymore. 66 Zerglings making their way on in. We do still have a few Banelings sitting right here. Is he going to continue to drop those? Yes, they do. The Stalkers do go down. Two High Templars still remaining on the board. 76 Zerglings making their way on in. That is a huge, huge number. And T-Gun trying to resupply as quickly as possible. Trying to get up back to that supply cap. And here we go. Big push coming right out. Look at that. He lost so many Overlords. That was my concern. My concern was that he was going to lose way too many Overlords. And as a result, he wouldn't be able to reinforce. And that is very, very unfortunate. It, he's got no overlords coming in very low on the resources and i don't know t gun's looking to be in a very very unfortunate spot right now blink stalkers in a very good position uh, t gun not able to get us around and t gun's lost everything he is only available 82 supply he's got not he doesn't have enough resources to make enough overlords he's got seven coming through um his resource collection rate is actually pretty low in comparison let's take a look at that income tab right now and yeah <laughs> uh, that's too bad this game would suck if protoss took skill wouldn't it so t gun not happy at all with the outcome of that game as you know as effective as that baneling drop looked my big concern was that he was going to lose all those overlords and as a result he would have um, gotten supply captain that's exactly what happened also since he didn't get up that high yield we had uh, we had cheetah on such a heavy amount of bases uh, he had so many bases the entire game he took his half of the map quite early that gave him a huge uh, huge uh, resource pool to sit on and as soon as he dropped in resources he was able to reinforce and wasn't really concerned about that too too much as soon as his army dropped and although we did see gun with that very quick 200 supply cap after that first big battle he wasn't able to capitalize on it and he didn't have the income to reinforce more than two times and unfortunately because of that cheetah did prevail with some great blink stalker micro so what an intense game between these two players hopefully you guys enjoyed it um should be having another video come out for you today as well so as always guys this has been force from force strategy gaming if you like the content make sure you subscribe to the channel keep watching and keep owning the key with magic boxing is you do not want your mutas to clump up if you tell something if you basically, you, you bring them to one position. If you tell them to go anywhere within the boxed area that is that position, they will clump up into a big group like that. So you have to let them spread. You have to bring them to a position, let them spread, and then just do not click within their range. If you can click anywhere around the map and they will stay in that boxed position. And that is the idea. Now the same thing is going to happen if you click to attack a position, they're going to clump up. So you cannot 